not a bad place to watch the sunrise, is it? No. Welcome to one of the most breathtaking places on earth, Finca Hamburgo. How you get from this to this. Mmm. Mmm. Smell good ground coffee. Buenos dias. Your coffee, sir. Or a cup of this good smelling coffee. Say, this is really a good cup of coffee. We're starting our tour right where the coffee begins in the campo, in the fields of coffee with our amigo Manuel. Manuel is our expert guide of the day. He's gonna tell us everything we need to know about the coffee. A few fun facts I've learned already is that they, these coffee plants are will last or produce fruit for up to 25 yep. years. And every four years, uh, they will go through and kind of prune. prune. Yeah, they get, they get a little manicure. Here's a closer look at uh, the actual coffee beans itself. You can see the, we have some that are very red and some that are very green. Now, the green ones are not quite ready to pick. Manuel told me that these will be ready to pick uh, in probably December or January, and the red ones are pretty much ready to be picked. The cosecha, the harvest, happens one time per year. It, it is between October and, and uh, December to January. Now, the interesting thing to me is that from the same plant, the same uh, audible, the same bush or tree here, you will have a huge variety between some that are ready or already ready, and then some that'll still be months until they're ready. For example, are too late. They, 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 they weren't picked in time. So these have already, yeah. these have already gone bad, you can see. And so you don't want, you don't want these. And you can tell by their weight. In the weight and, and the there's, color. There's nothing. Some secos. Yeah, secos. Uh -huh. Shriveled up. Como mi suegro. Here behind me we can see one smaller bush that has, uh, he said that is the size that they come when they arrive to the camp, when they're basically planted, transplanted into the ground. And it takes about four years until they are a full grown plant in which they, they are producing uh, a big enough quality enough uh, fruit to be harvested. As we're walking through the coffee fields here, Manuel is pointing out these are all those son Arabigas, Arabigas. but there are different um, types. different types of the uh, underneath the Arabica family. Por ejemplo, esta es Arabica como Arabica qué? De 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 cómo se llama este esta planta? Así que la garnica. Y esa salchimor. Salchimor, <laughs> and he's we're walking through and he's saying this one's this, this one's this, and we said, well, how do you know? He said these, so he Easy. can just, he's an expert, he can tell. This fruit, la uva, uh, the actual fruit part of it is fatter, the tree is fatter, and this one uh -huh. is skinnier, and the actual yeah. fruit is is <laughs> is much, much skinnier. So it's, it's so fascinating. For us walking through the fields, everything they just looks the same. same. Pero Manuel es el experto del día. <laughs> now, these bags we've been told are 50 kilos a piece or about 100 pounds, just over 100 pounds, about 120 pounds actually. Each picker picks 90 kilos a day. In other words, this total, these two bags total is about 90 pounds we estimate. Manuel told us this was from one person. Here behind us, we have two more bags. This is another person. They didn't fill their bags quite up as much as the first person. And then we have other groups of bags here that were done uh, by different people. In the world of coffee, there are two main uh, different types of coffee that you might see at the grocery store. There's many more than that, but uh, two different families rather. This. Well, mostly what we've seen is the Arabica. This is the Robusto. That actually, that Hamburgo does not uh, does not produce. This was came here the seed by accident. Uh, and he said this one. The difference. Uh, uh, one difference in the Robusto is it's uh, more bitter. 
uh, más, más eh, amargo. Amargo, sí, ma too, too bitter compared to the arábiga. And the real main difference that uh, you as a consumer would know at home is the Café Robusto costs about a dollar a kilo for the, the coffee uh, already toasted and ready to go, whereas the Café Arábiga costs how much per kilo? Around $10. It can be more than $10, around 9 to $12 a kilo. Wow, so that tells you something a little bit about the, uh, the quality of the plants. Now here's the actual factory, uh, so to speak, where the actual process of the cafe, uh, the coffee, the cafe, uh, begins. The workers will bring their, their sacks here. They will be weighed. They are paid based on how much, uh, how much they picked for that day. They are weighed. It will then go down below to these tanks. It will go through a system to, uh, to clean it. It will pass through another system of uh, water and pressure where the Light grains will float to the top, and basically those are the grains that you don't want. That is the, the bad stuff. The, the café de, de primera, the good coffee, will sink to the bottom. And it will then go through this other machine to remove the outside, remove the, the outside uh, cascara, the outside shell of it, where it will just have the actual bean in it. That will go through another process to make sure that it is cleaned and that the, uh, the cascara is, is not, <laughs> that is in fact not on it. It will go through another process to then double check the weight of it. Basically, the, the worst quality ones will still float to the top and the good coffee will, will sink to the bottom and continue on through the process. Wow, I hope that made sense. It is clear that the uh, process to make coffee is way more complicated than I could have ever imagined. Once the coffee is done fermenting, passes through more steps to ensure that it is, or to basically separate it from the cafe, the primera, the first class, the, the best coffee bean versus some of the vanos, the one that were uh, not as high of quality coffee. They will arrive here. This is the patio de, de primera. They will dry here. Now here we have coffee that arrived here today. This is more, uh, more humid, more wet. Green more green and then you can see as the the color changes the longer it is it is, it is sat here under the sun on this concrete pat patio it will sit here for one to two days to dry now as i got a little closer to these massive piles i noticed that there's another sort of shell let's see if i can grab one here this is a this is the second shell of the coffee so the first one is that dark red one where a machine removes later i think we're going to see how the second shell is removed but like greg just said Making coffee is a process. <laughs> One of the more interesting aspects about coffee is I didn't know how many different uh, qualities, different grades of coffee there were. This is the patio de pulpa. This is the worst of the worst of the worst of the quality of the grains. A lot of it, you can actually smell the, the, the skin. A lot of the skin is skin that didn't come off. For whatever reason, it was a bad quality now the confusing part is is that as far as we know as far as what Manuel has told us whether it's cafe de primera cafe de vano or cafe de pulpa the different qualities is still all sold like coffee and he said most of what you will find at the supermarket is not going to be the cafe de primera it is not the highest quality co coffee yet there's usually I've noticed on bags I've never really seen bags of coffee like Folgers or any other brands inside La Comer or Walmart don't necessarily say which coffee it is. So you don't know what quality of coffee you're getting when you buy it from the supermarket, which makes me feel like they should have more like tighter regulations on the actual production and selling of coffee. But that's just my expert opinion on knowing coffee for all of an hour. Here we have the last step, the last machine that checks the quality of the, co the coffee. Uh, I don't know how many steps there's been from weighing it, uh, if floating, different devices that shake it, different devices that take out the air. This one uh, can note the difference in like if the color's right, if there's rocks in it, if there's any skins in it. Uh, so this is the final pass through it goes to determine the quality of the coffee. Now of all the coffee, here growing in, the, growing in the finca, only 16% is Café de Primera. Wow, the amount of steps it goes through just to get to an, an untoasted coffee bean 
is mind blowing. Now here's the process in which we take the green or the gold coffee, the, basically the bean that has been, isn't brown yet, hasn't been toasted, and turn it into the coffee bean or the ground coffee in which you have seen many times over. We have a coffee here, it goes into this oven basically, and here we have the toasted beautiful coffee. And it smells. Look at the oven. What an incredible, incredible <laughs> process. That was only like three hours of our day, but it's truly incredible from farm to cup, everything that happens in between those two. It's so much more involved, so much more of a process than we could have ever imagined. Yep. One last fun fact that I think we left out is that a hundred kilos of these babies, yep. of this fruit, uh, will eventually only make 12 kilos or about uh, 25 pounds of actual toasted ready to be brewed coffee 100 kilos yep down to just 12. coffee is something that hillary and i drink every day and you've seen us yeah. enjoy it on film on camera many many times and to be able to learn more about the process and learn what goes into each cappuccino each espresso yeah. uh, that we drink is truly special and it makes that espresso that much more special i think that's all we have for you